Today's slate for Daily Fantasy Baseball is what I would call a murky one, and I say that because there's no like clear traditional cash game type option at pitcher. You've got some guys with upside, but there's no pitcher who checks every traditional box, like at home, in a good matchup, pitching well, stuff like that. You're going to have to get a bit creative at pitcher for today, and to me, that's fine because... I'm not a huge cash game guy to begin with, but also I like taking risks. I feel like I can do a good job of identifying guys who may be in tough spots, but are ones that do come with some upside. I think that's a good slate for that. So I'm feeling pretty good about the way this slate breaks down for today. We'll break down some pitchers I think fit that mold very well. Let you know my top options for DFS on FanDuel for today. Welcome on into the solo shot. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and numberfire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I'm a senior writer and analyst for numberfire.com. Here to break down Monday's 11 game main slate with lock set for 7.05 p.m. Eastern for tonight. There are a couple of rain notes out on the East Coast. Looks like the rain in Baltimore for the Yankees and the Orioles should be moving out around first pitch. So I think they should be okay there. But if that timing were to change, could cause some issues for them. Rain is possible for the Astros and Red Sox, though it appears like pretty low odds. It's around 20 to 25% most of the game. I think they should be okay there. The biggest issue for rain is in New York for the Mets and the Cardinals. That one, I think, is a legit shot to get rained out. So keep an eye on that one. See how it plays out. I'm not super interested in either stacking that game or using pitchers there, but at least keep an eye on it to see if things change as the day goes along. Break down which pitchers I am into and the top stacks in just one second. But first, a quick reminder to make sure you are subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. We, of course, are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts. You name it, you can find us there. And while you're there, if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. Later on today on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed, Brandon Gadula and I will break down this week's PGA Championship from a DFS perspective. That will also be live on the FanDuel YouTube page, probably around 2.30 or so. We have actually not set that yet, but we will eventually. Probably 2.30 or so on the FanDuel YouTube page live there. So if you want to watch that, hit subscribe there. But then just check it out on the uh, DFS podcast feed if you want to get the audio version there. Speaking of that, golf's second major is set to tee off this Thursday with the PGA Championship, and it comes with big prizes to be won on FanDuel. This week's Mega Eagle Contest is $400,000 in guarantee prizes with 100 k going to first place. Entry fee on that, just $9. You can turn $9 into 100 k For more details and to get yourself entered, go to FanDuel.com or download the FanDuel Fantasy app, eligibility restrictions apply. Let's dive into the pitching preview for today over on FanDuel, where Miles Nicholas is the highest salary pitcher at $10,200. Noah Syndergaard is $9,900. Freddie Peralta, $97. Brad Keller is $92. They with Tony Gonsolin, Jacob Rizzi, Zach Logue, Luis Severino, and Garrett Whitlock as the others at $8,000 or higher. And again, like I said, nobody in that array is going to be your traditional criteria of at home, good matchup, pitching well. We're not going to get that for today. I think the closest we get is via Freddie Peralta. And it's not because of safety. It's because of upside. Peralta facing the Atlanta Braves. And I think that he's going to be my top guy for today. So I mentioned the Braves. That's why this is not a safe, not a traditional spot, because the floor is bad. Uh, Peralta is struggling with hard contact still in the Braves have a 188 uh, ISO against righties. So it could go awry very quickly, but the upside is fun. The Braves do strike out. They got a 25% strikeout rate against righties based on their current active roster this year. And Peralta gets plenty of those strikeouts. He didn't throw his slider much in his first two starts, but he's featured it across his past four starts. In those four starts, his strikeout rate is 32%. That ranks second on the slate in each guy's most relevant sample. The walks, very low as well, which is a good thing for Peralta. He's still not super efficient with his pitches despite the low walk rate, which is why he hasn't gone longer than six innings in any of these starts, but he is fully stretched out. So Peralta just needs to make sure he can get some quick work. You know, if he's not going to get a strikeout, get these guys out fast, and I push him out further into the game. I have Peralta projected for 7.7 strikeouts. That is the highest number on the slate. So yeah, a lot of things could go wrong against a very good Braves team. We do have to keep that in mind. 
But I do like him because the ceiling matters, the strikeouts matter, especially if we're not going to get safety elsewhere, we might as well get upside. And Freddie Peralta does give us that. So I'll go to him tonight at $9,700 as my top guy for the day. Now, I read through the pitchers with salaries of $9,000 or higher. I don't like any of them outside of Peralta. So to me, my number two guy is actually value play, as will be the number three guy. The number two guy is Luis Severino. He is on the road, but he is more of a traditional pitching selection. He's kind of, you know, if Peralta is the upside guy, Severino is the one who gets closest to being a high floor option in large part due to the match. He's facing the Orioles who have not been bad this year. They've been solid. But they're not an offense we need to fear in DFS right now. Their active roster has a 99 WRC plus against righties with a 126 ISO, got a middling strikeout rate. That should be a decent spot for Severino in terms of how we're viewing things from a DFS perspective. And Severino's pitched well in his return to, you know, being fully healthy. His ERA is 4.08. That's fine but the peripherals are good. He has a 3.41 skill interactive ERA with a 25% strikeout rate. His ground ball rate, 46%. When you combine that with a good strikeout rate, you get a 3.04 expected ERA over a baseball savant. We did see Severino face the Orioles, which means they have seen him so far this year, but back on April 26th, so there's been a lot of time between them and now, which means familiarity shouldn't be too, too high in this spot. In that game, Severino had a 13% swing and strike rate. That is his second highest mark of the year. And last time out, he had eight strikeouts. The upside is there. He did struggle beyond the eight strikeouts, but it was against the Blue Jays. Uh, They're a much tougher matchup, I think, than the Orioles are. So I do like Severino for a bounce back here. I put him right behind Peralta, even in tournaments. So to me, it's Peralta one, Severino two. I will take that discount on Severino for tonight. Helps me get nuts with stacks, and I will take that uh, given the stacks I like for today. So I will put Severino number two in this spot. The pitcher I like tonight, who is a real swing and a real risk, is Yusei Kikuchi. It is a revenge game facing the Mariners, and he's letting up a ton of hard contact. It's a pretty brutal mark right now, but the past three starts for Kikuchi have been really impressive. And I'm willing to give him a shot here because it's been a big philosophical change for Kikuchi. He is basically cut out his cutter, and it was a bad pitch for him last year. It was actually his worst pitch by a wide margin, according to Baseball Savant. And the first three starts this year, we saw Kikuchi use that pitch at the same rate he used it last year. But in his fourth start, he basically didn't throw it. And that shift has worked wonders for him, because across those three starts, Kikuchi's strikeout rate is 32%. He is still letting up gobs of hard contact, and more walks than you'd like, but that's a big strikeout rate. And he did that against really tough teams. He faced the Astros and then faced the Yankees in back-to-back starts. He still had at least a 12.4% swing and strike rate in all three of those starts. And we haven't seen Kikuchi in a good matchup yet this year. Now, the Mariners are not that. They're not a good matchup. They've been pretty solid against lefties in a small sample. So it could go wrong. But what Kikuchi has right now is the path to a good game. and. It's a murky slate. There aren't a lot of guys with safety. I'm fine taking the world upside. I think Kikuchi does ha- have that. So it may not work. He could let up six earned runs, make me look really stupid, but that's okay. I want to take a risk like that on a slate like this. So Kikuchi, volatile, but in a good way, because it does include his ceiling. So to me, Kikuchi, the number three starter behind Freddie Peralta and Luis Severino for tonight, it should illustrate how weird this slate is, but I think that uh, with those three guys, you at least have a path to upside. Severino a bit more safety, but I do feel comfortable with that trio for today. Now, part of the reason I was okay with going with some key value plays at pitcher is because, A, because I just like them more, but also I want to stack Coors Field. We move here to the stacking section. I want to stack the Giants. They're the top stack for today by a pretty wide margin. They're at Coors Field facing Antonio Sensatella, and it's the second straight time that Sensatella has faced them. The first one did not go well. I would expect something similar in this spot. That first game was in San Francisco, and uh, Sensatella let up five earned runs there. And the key aspect for him today is how many balls in play he allows. He has a 6% strikeout rate this year with a 5% walker, which means you combine those together and take out the rounding, he's letting up a ball in play 88% of the time. 
And his ground ball rate is down to 41%. Hard hit rate is 42%, which is why his expected ERA at baseball savant is 7.03. It's tough to make that work anywhere, but it's much tougher at Coors Field, especially against a legitimate offense, with the, which the Giants very much are. A 116 WRC plus against righties. They get a massive, massive, massive biggest park factor upgrade you could possibly concoct in your brain for today, going from San Francisco to Coors Field. I think we need to be sky high on them here. They'll be very popular, but they should be. I think this is a no-brainer type spot for today with the Giants. I think we'll see Mike Yastrzemski start to hit his stride here pretty soon, so I want to be high on him within these stacks. He's got pretty similar peripheral numbers to last year. His hard hit rate is actually a bit higher. The fly ball rate is down, but some of that's shifting towards line drives versus just being towards ground balls. Not striking out a whole lot. It hasn't turned into power yet, but as he goes to, to Coors Field, maybe it will. So I will be there for sure as a part of these stacks with Yastrzemski, Lamont Wade uh, batting leadoff once again. He's actually below 3,000, so that's kind of crazy. We, again, I don't think we'll need the savings as much for today, but if you want to jam in, Brandon Belt and all those other guys in this uh, this Giants team, you can use them for sure. So Yastrzemski, a guy I'm expecting to pick it up soon, way to key value play, but overall the Giants, to me, no-brainer top stack of the night. For our number two stack, going to keep on beating my head against the wall because it's been pretty tough stacking against Madison Bumgarner so far this year. His ERA, 1.78. So I look very foolish, and it could be dumb to keep going to this well but I'm going to keep on being dumb and stacking the Dodgers for today. It's because the numbers say that Bumgarner should regress. His his skill interactive ERA is 4.92. He has a low strikeout rate, a high walk rate. Fly ball rate is 47%. Now, the one thing that Bumgarner is doing well is keeping the hard contact in check. He is allowed just a 38% hard hit rate, which is not too bad, especially in in a in an environment where fly balls aren't doing as much damage. That's why his expected ERA is 3.80. Another piece of evidence that it could be dumb to keep stacking against Bumgarner is that, um, you know, that, that, that expected ERA is lower. And again, the context of this year means maybe we don't want to go as heavy at fly ball pitchers, but we have seen Bumgarner face a pretty easy schedule. He has faced the Cardinals and the Astros. They're both very good against lefties, but The other starts for Bumgarner have all been pretty easy. I'm not sure if that explains all of it. Like, that could just be a small portion of it, but gets a tough assignment here. He's facing the Dodgers, who have not torn it up against lefties, but they do have guys who can do it. And I think, you know, it's a small sample so far on the Dodgers versus lefties, so I'm not going to, you know, say that they they can't hit lefties this year. I'm going to keep on stacking against Bumgarner here, keep on having faith in the Dodgers, and if it bites me, it bites me. I think that's a worthwhile uh, gamble to take for today, uh, and I will do so with the Dodgers. Typically against Bumgarner, you do want to load up on the righties, and I do want to do that, prioritize them for today. But it is worth mentioning that both Freddie Freeman and Cody Bellinger can hit lefties pretty well. Bellinger does strike out a lot, but the batted ball numbers and the power are there. So I would, you know, go towards him. Freeman has always been good against lefties, no matter what stuff has been like. So I would favor the righties because Bumgarner is definitely better against lefties, but don't completely omit specifically those two lefties. Max Muncy, I can take your lead, but I think Bellinger, Freeman, both those guys worth a long look for today, especially if it means they will go a bit under rostered in tournaments as a result of the lefty on lefty matchup. I think that that could be advantageous to be higher on them for today compared to what the field may be. For our third stack, going back to Toronto, last year, Chris Flexen was able to get by without a lot of strikeouts. Good results. They 3.61 ERA. But the numbers have gotten worse this year, and I don't think he'll be able to keep this up if things stick where they currently are. So I do want to stack the Blue Jays in this spot. The big thing for Flexen with the regression has been his bad of ball data. He's letting up a 45% hard hit rate with a 44% fly ball rate. Both those numbers are much worse than where he was last year. And it's led to an expected ERA of 5.14. His actual ERA is 4.24. So it's not like he's been perfect from a results perspective either. Uh, He had big issues last week against the Phillies, let up two home runs, six earned runs. That game was at home. He's now facing the Jays on the road. They're a good team. 
They haven't hit like it all the time so far this year, but they're a good team. And I, I think that's going to be a pretty tough spot for Flexen. So I'm going to stack against him here with the Jays and see if the results continue to swing in our favor. With the Jays, they just got Danny Jansen, the bespectacled beast off the IL. He's hit the crap out of the ball since the start of last year when he when he's been healthy. He's batting eighth, uh, but I'll be I'm fine being there. I, you know, he's not like min salary. He's twenty five hundred dollars, but like it's the bespectacled beast, man. I can't not use Danny Jansen when stacking the Jays, so I'll be there for sure. I'll, I think that Matt Chapman too should eventually get going. Um, he's making hard contact at least, you know, striking out a lot still, but making some hard contact. So Danny Jansen back on the menu once again for as many catches, uh, but I'll be there for sure with Danny Jansen. Let's go now to things to watch. Kind of unsure what to do with the Yankees. They're facing Kyle Bradish, who had 11 strikeouts his last time out, but he is still letting up hard contact and fly balls. The Yankees are a tougher matchup than the Cardinals were in that one. So I'm not using Bradish. I know that part, but I think the Jay or the Yankees released a consideration for stacking here against Bradish, despite what he did last time out. I still think that the hard contact aspect should be enough to make us feel pretty good about them here. I'd be okay with some one-offs on the Red Sox. Basing Jake Odorizzi, who is suppressing hard contacts, uh, and he's pitching well. That's why I can't stack them on top of the Red Sox. who's struggling right now, but fly balls lead to dingers. Dingers are good for one-offs, so I'm okay being on the Red Sox here and stack, I mean, not stacking them, but like having one-offs against Odorizzi. Finally, two unconfirmed starters for today are for the Pirates and the White Sox. I'm guessing the Pirates will start Bryce Wilson. Probably wouldn't stack the Cubs there. They're not a great team against righty, so kind of need a better matchup to go at them. And I think that Johnny Cueto is probably the most likely starter for the White Sox. Lucas Giolito has been listed some places, but I don't think it's going to be him based on the timing of when he went on the COVID list. Um, if, it, if it's uh, Cueto, I don't have a ton of interest in stacking against him. Pretty good batted ball numbers for him last year. So assuming it's Wilson and Cueto starting, I wouldn't have a ton of interest, but check back on the starters for the Pirates and the White Sox to see if it could open up more stacking opportunities on the opposing side. Finally, let's get to our dinger picks for today. And if it's a like a flow chart type thing, like let's say I mentioned at some point during the podcast, you should stack the Giants. You can pencil in Brandon Belt as the home run pick for that day. And we'll go that way for today. Belt, just a, a great hitter. Doesn't, I think, get as much praise as he deserves in large part because the park he plays in sucks, especially for lefties. So uh, Brandon Belt to me, the fun one for, or the boring one for today. The fun one, I will go lefty on lefty and go with Cody Bellinger, facing off uh, with Madison Bumgarner. Bumgarner, again, letting up a lot of fly balls, a lot of hard contact. Bellinger can do both. Well, not as much hard contact, but Bellinger puts the ball in the air, does strike out a lot against lefties, but Bumgarner not as big in that department. So I think Bellinger has shown me enough where I can think that he is at least in play for these home run picks. So I'm okay making my home run picks for today. Brandon Belt and Cody Bellinger. That is all that we have here for today on the solo shot. As a reminder that we are back once again later on today to preview the PGA Championship. Myself and Brandon Gadula will be live on the FanDuel YouTube page probably around 2.30 to get you set for that and also up on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed after that. So hit subscribe over there to get PGA, MLB, UFC, and NASCAR podcasts each and every week. If you've got questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonis, J-I-M-S-A-N. NES. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Big thank you to everyone for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lines for today. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down Tuesday's slate. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.